Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Emily Zaris. How you doing, Emily? I'm good. How are you? Where are you today, actually, is the real well, question. I'm actually in, in Norfolk, Virginia. I, I'm in in my room. We're at a conference here uh, for, for ALA, but I've literally been in literally five different time zones in the past two weeks. Uh, so, so I'm a little delirious right now, but I'm super excited about our the guest today. And and from the yes. from the talks of our guest, he's he's been doing a little traveling himself. So, uh, without further ado, Emily, please introduce today's guest. Yes, today's guest is a world class vocalist <clears throat> who has performed up as the lead singer for the Modern Day Doors and is the founder and lead singer of Steel Heart. And he's also been traveling through four or five time zones as well, okay. like. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Malinko Matijevic. Hey. Yay! I like Yay! Hello. How, hello, how do we hello, do on the name, Malinko? Uh, brutal, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, <Yudienko. laughs> it's okay. Trust me. Sorry. Everyone, everyone has that. No, don't be sorry. I mean, it's it's not an easy one. So, um, <laughs> Uh, it's it's interesting you've been traveling a lot yourself so uh the only thing is you don't have to play <laughs> you don't have to sing <laughs> well, so yeah. no that's it's all good I, yeah. I was in alaska last week and now i'm all the way on the east coast and uh, everywhere in between in the past couple of weeks so uh definitely uh ready to get get back to dallas and get get in my bed for for a change but it's a pleasure having you with us today and can you let our viewers know well, where you're coming to us from today uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I am coming actually from Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, uh, Detroit, and then Los Angeles. So I've been uh, through a moment and also, but I started off in Maui. So uh, I've been a, a, a traveling boy for the last, uh, last week. Wow. <laughs> so a lot, awesome. that is a lot of time zones. And um, your family actually moved from Croatia to America when you were only six years old. What was that like as a young boy starting over in a new country? Um, honestly, it was uh, terrifying, challenging, um, you know, not being able to speak the language and coming here at that age is um, something really, um, how would I say, um, shocking you know especially coming to a country so powerful and when i was a kid uh, back in croatia we'd watch the uh, the cowboy movies and we would be like round around yeah you know, that's what we would talk you know making kind of like we're speaking english and when we finally uh, came to this country it was wow i i didn't just looking back now i remember um just being really quiet you know and um how would I say, um, bashful, you know, mm -hmm. and then, but little by little, I started learning the language, but, uh, honestly, the language came very quickly, you know, and, um, and then I got into the groove and here I am, my home. Yeah. It's funny. That? It's funny when people say how they learn English and you said cowboy movies. So I could just imagine some of the terms you were using yeah. from those cowboy movies as you're learning <laughs> English. Well, it was John Wayne, you know, he always did. So it was like, hey, right, sure, boy, right, 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 right. I mean, that's what we did. It was funny. That's what we actually did, you know. So, and we thought we were speaking English. <laughs> so. so music was a huge part of your childhood. And so who are some of the artists that kind of stoked your passion for music? Well, you know, I started off, believe it or not, with Johnny Cash. And when we came to this country, um, uh, well, first of all, we I lived in Croatia. My parents came here first, and then they brought us over. And um, my dad was completely into the country music. So um, we started playing Johnny Cash, John Denver, you know, that kind of music. And it was wonderful. Johnny Cash is still, you know, 
deep in my heart. But uh, when I got a little older, I, I, I heard Robert Plant. And when I heard Robert Plant go, hey, hey mama, said, way you move, I was done. It was over, Blue you know, on. and uh, it just it just grabbed me, my soul, you know. And then I started getting into Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Van Halen, Black Sabbath, you know, and um, the Bad Company, you know, and that just really um, just got a hold of me. And here I am, you know, 30, oh God, more, longer than that uh, in this uh, business singing. So rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> And you actually left college for a music career um, and Steelheart was born. How difficult was it for you to get your foot in the door? And did you imagine that Steelheart would be so successful? Um, you know, interesting enough, you know, when I went to college, um, well, I first met the band, a couple of the guys in the band uh, beforehand, and we rehearsed a few times, you know, and, um, it just had a good synergy, you know? And funny enough, I was, uh, I was in my uh, apartment at that time. I was on the third floor and I had books all over my bedroom floor at the drafting table, you know, I'm going in, I'm working my butt off. And, uh, and then Chris called me, he goes, Hey, so are we doing this or what? Exact words. Mm. And I looked at the books and I go, I'm in. I swear, I took I took all the books and I threw them out the window. It was more of a symbolic thing, you know, to let go. And and then we started the journey. Started rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. And we just couldn't get a break. The band was amazing. We were tight. We had great songs, all the above. But for some reason, everyone had something to say. It, well, this is not right, and this is not right. But I knew, I knew in my heart, like we had it. It was, it was good, you know. And I always felt that in my heart, you know. I, I always felt that we were going to do something. And um, one day, I was having dinner with my parents, and my my father goes to me, "So, what are you going to do? What are you doing with your life?" You know, with a broken <laughs> accent. And um, I go, you know. I'm, I'm leaving Friday for Hollywood to become a star. Exact words. And he goes, do it. I go, okay. So jumped in, uh, got Hollywood, met a manager. He didn't want to listen to the music because he was too uh, full. He had too many acts. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you just send it to me? So I fed exit to him in New York. He was, he, his office was in New York. So that same day, so when he came in the morning, he um, he had the tape on his desk. And he left on my answer machine. He only got halfway through Angel Eyes. And he said, you prick, it is that good. Call me. <laughs> this is on, this, I swear, this is a true story. True story. This is Tuesday. Come on, call him. He goes, can you come in tomorrow, Wednesday? Sure. We come in tomorrow. He goes, I love the band. I want to work with you. Okay, we made a quick little deal because let's have a verbal agreement that we're going to work together. Great. We leave. We're all excited, you know. Friday at 5 p.m., he calls me. You ready? You're going to be on Universal Records. Have a good weekend. Mm. So we rehearsed for literally 10 years and trying to get a deal, and it happened within two days once you find the right people. So it really is all about you know, connecting to the right people and the right energy and all of that. So anyway, that was my quick little story. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I was, I was going to ask you, um, what did your parents think when you threw the books out of the windows and just, and, and started, you know, pursuing your music career, but you, you kind of, you kind of touched on it a little bit. So that's, that's awesome. Well, I mean, it was, I mean, my, my life went downhill when I discovered Led Zeppelin. Okay. With my dad, <laughs> because he was just so, you know, he thought I was going to get into drugs. He thought I was going to be a loser, you know, all the above. And which is sad because he gave me zero support with it. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I kept on and I kept it honest. I kept it straight, you know, um, and 
sadly, they're both passed away. But, um, you know, it was interesting. My dad would never, um, he would never compliment me into my face. You know, he would compliment me through other people when he talks to other people, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was, uh, it was the right decision. It's what I do. It's who I am. I, I can't, you know, you have to be honest with yourself, who you are. And this is what I do. And I hope I touch, you know, people, their hearts and through my music, through my singing, through my soul. So love to all. Absolutely. That's a that's a great story of just really believing in yourself and and pursuing your dream. So uh, thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that. So you, you also went on tour with some of the remaining members of the Doors and filled the role of Jim Morrison. Now, uh, had you always been a Doors fan and, and how daunting of a task was that to kind of step in those shoes? Well, so the honest truth of that, OK, when I was growing up, I was Led Zeppelin, Van Halen. Deep Purple, Bad Company, you know? And the other side of the high school was The Doors, you know, um, uh, Doobie Brothers and stuff like that. It was interesting, we were like the rivals, you know? And I mean, of course I know the songs of The Doors, but I was never really, you know, into it. You know, that wasn't really my, my thing. But um, interesting enough, I was looking for a manager and um, so I met with Tom Votorino uh, here in Los Angeles. And we're having lunch and he goes, you know, I manage a band, pretty famous band. Uh, oh, but hear me for one second. Two weeks prior, I had a premonition that I was gonna join a band. I was gonna do something completely different than what I'm used to doing, okay? And when I talked to Tom, he goes, I, I manage this band and I think you'd be really good as the lead singer. We're looking for a new singer. And they sold about 80 million records. Would you be interested in auditioning? I go, well, who's the band? And he said, well, The Doors. I was like, oh, shit, there it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there is the, you know, there it is. I, I mean, I said, yeah, of course, I'll, of course I'd love to audition, you know? And uh, he goes, great. You probably know all the songs. You just got to brush up a little bit. So we'll see you here in a few weeks. I went back. I was actually living in Charlottesville, Virginia at the time. And um, and I came back home and I'll never forget it. I'm sitting there listening to the music because I'm not really familiar. I didn't dig into it. You know what I mean? To the soul of it. And when I started getting into it, I was like, oh, sh oof, this is like a whole nother vibe for me. And then it clicked. It's as if I don't know what happened, but. Um, I just, I went, I, I got up and I got it into my car. I put the CD in my car and I'm listening. I went to the studio. I literally sat in the middle of my studio. I had this huge room. I turned the music on and, and I, I, I swear now, whether it's me making it up in my mind or a reality, but it was my reality. And I sat there listening to music and I felt as if someone came to me and goes, Hey, I need you to do this. And I was, I just lost it. I was in major tears. I was just like oh, really heavy. It was beautiful, you know? And I felt the presence of Jim, you know? And um, yeah. And I said, yeah, absolutely, I accept. I came to rehearsal. I sang one song and there was several people waiting, you know, to audition and, uh, and then Robbie's like, wow, that's great. Then I sang another song. And then Ray's go, oh, can you do another one? We sang another song. And we sang another song and another song. And then he said, can you do Light My Fire? And when I finished Light My Fire, that last scream that, you know, Jim does, he goes, we're done. And, <laughs> and that's how I joined. So it was, it was um, absolutely beautiful. It was a gift. Um, so many shows. Again, I will say this, and, and I mean this with all my heart, that um, Jim would come to me, you know, whether, again, if I'm making it up, it doesn't matter. It's my reality, right? But I would, uh, one particular time, we were playing Prague, a very big show, and I was just about to start singing, and something said to me, stop. You're too early. Stop. Just stop for a second. Just listen to the music. Close your eyes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me, feel the energy, feel the crowd, feel the people, 
feel it all, take it in, now sing. So it was, um, it was, it was amazing. So um, I didn't jump into Jim's shoes to be Jim. I, my job was to be me and to transcend the energy of Jim. And I think that's why it worked so well. I just had a show with uh, Robbie, um, I think about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago at the Whiskey. I jumped up and sang a few songs and it was just like, bam, magic all over again. So there you go. That's the story. Awesome. No, that's incredible. And um, I, I'll give you how I learned about Jim Morrison and you guys will probably all be disappointed in me, but I was in high school and there was a picture of the band doors in my history class. And the bonus question was, if you could name the lead singer, I did not get the bonus question correct, but I never messed that up again. And that's how I started learning about um, yeah. music like that. Cause I told my mom about that and she was very upset and thought she failed me as a parent that I did not know who uh, Jim Morrison and the doors were. And, uh, it just opened up like that. So anytime I hear Jim Morrison, I just think about that moment in time that I got an A instead of an A plus. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we, are so, we are so thrilled that you have agreed to play a song for us today. And can you let us know what song you're going to play and what the meaning behind it is? Well, uh, I am going to, uh, so, First of all, we are early here, and um, I will do my, uh, how would I say, give it all my gut for this uh, early morning. Um, mm -hmm. song's called My Freedom. And I would like to, um, I think the lyrics say everything. And what I would like to do is I would like the listener to really open their mind, whatever they feel. You know, I don't want to, um, how would I say, dilute their vision of what the lyrics are. Um, I think uh, everybody will get it and you kind of take it to where you want to take it. How does that sound? That sounds great. Yes, I'm ready. Chief, are you ready? I am ready, ready. I'm so uh, we're excited. We're doing this right now. Here we go. Let's yes. see what we got. Hold on. Now, the one Let's thing. Let's make it happen. The only thing, I don't know how it's going to sound because I got these earphones going. And uh, I don't know if it's going to... Is it going to distort? How's it sounding? It sounds good. It sounded, I like it. it. Sounds good. You sure? Yeah. I just want to breathe. I don't want to die no more. In freedom is all I'm asking for. I don't want to roll, cause I can't run no more, just to live again, I want just to breathe again. Come on! Just to live again, I want just to breathe again. I just want to love like the morning sun. You shine the light for me till my days are said and done. I'm coming home, take me home, I want to breathe, I don't want to die no more, and freedom is all I'm asking for, I want to run, but I can't run no more, just to live 
Amazing. Awesome. Incredible. An early riser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Nah, we would have never guys, guessed we've been like through four different time zones this week. It was great. <laughs> well, if you saw if you saw me yesterday morning, you would understand. So <laughs> no, no, that was that was awesome. And and just, you know, kind of listening to those words, uh, I think we can all relate to that, you know, having something that's kind of holding us back or something that's weighing down on on us uh, on a daily basis and just kind of releasing that and just kind of being free. So uh, that's definitely yeah. some, some, uh, there's a lot of layers to that song and, and it's, it's awesome. I, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you enjoyed it. It, it, it is, uh, you know, everything I write and, and produce, it really, really is uh, things I've lived or I've seen other people live and really felt you know, so it's uh, everything's very dear and close to my heart, everything I do. So I hope that, you know, you guys get the same out of it. Absolutely. And and you've al always been very vocal about your support of the troops as well. Uh, so where did that passion come from? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I have some friends uh, that are, you know, uh, with the military. I also had the honor to, I don't know if you ever saw my video called LOL, and it's in a... Um, it's in a uh, fighter jet, and uh, the pilot flying is Dale Snodgrass. I don't know if you're familiar with Dale. Uh, he's one of the very um, uh, one of Top Gun pilots of all time. You know, he's passed now. Recently, he passed actually. And um, you know, it's I put it this way. I mean, the troops. I mean, our. How can I say this? It is you are protecting our country, right? So I hope this comes out right, but you know, you will take a bullet for us if anything goes really wrong. So my respect to that is, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just beautiful and I, and I, I support it. I honestly, I feel, um, I wish we would do something more for the people and I mean the troops that come back uh, like from the Vietnam and from the Iraq and all of that stuff. Um, you know, like, and when we have a football game, you know, and everybody's, 
crazy and uh, you know the world cup and it's like a big deal i mean i feel like we need to do a big deal for our troops as well when they come home so um i don't know I, it's just a passion it's just a thing it's just a respect it's an honor and um that's uh kind of like i live my life you know and um yeah i hope i explained that correctly but it's uh yeah. you know thank you i can honestly say thank you cuz you are it's it's it takes a lot to be and do what you do okay and i think uh the rest of us really need to respect that thank you and we do have a lot of our service members are watching um today and you did share gratitude already and we really appreciate that is there anything else you'd like to share um while we are all watching you here today with our um, not <laughs> well, only our America's armed forces, but their families as well. Well, you know, um, I can just say um, love to all. Thank you for your service. I, I mean, truly, it, it is. Um, I mean, almost lost for words. My apologies, because I, I it just it it just takes me deep. Um, it means a lot to me, and I really wish that more people would really, you know, join me in this um, vision of um, support, love, thank you. You know, I've been to a couple of um, places recently to Vietnam uh, suicide uh, uh, um, gatherings, and it's, um, it's heavy, you know, and my heart goes out to all the families and to, um, I, I love you all. That's all I can say. I see you, I, I respect it, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, and, and, and we appreciate you. And so thank you for you for, for always supporting and the love you have for us. Uh, kind of switching gears, uh, you're filming a feature film right now called Trust and Love. So how did that come about yeah. and how do you enjoy acting? Well, here it is. Yeah, here's one of the songs, you know, Trust and Love. I um, that came about, uh, uh, I had a friend of mine that was, uh, well, the song, I wrote a song, just a quick backstory. I wrote the song, Trust and Love. Um, and it's uh, for the unification. I originally wrote it for the unification of the North and South Korea, because I do a lot of work in Korea. And, and when I finished the song and I sang it in Korean and English, I, it kind of hit me and I was like, wow, well, this is a lot maybe a lot greater than just uh, that. Maybe it's bigger. So I said, you know, why don't I sing it in my language, considering my country had so many issues, Croatia. I was born in Croatia. Mm -hmm. And I, um, so I sang it in Croatia. And then when I sang it in Croatian, I was like, well, maybe I should sing it in Italian since it's right across the channel. So I sang it in Italian. And then I felt, well, this message needs to be heard throughout the world. So I sang it in 10 languages. And so far we released five and we're going to keep releasing. I'm, I'm going to do probably five more. So um, I'm, my goal is to do 15. And the reason I did it is so it's my respect for every country to hear the message, you know, to raise our vibration. And um, um, so when I finished the song, we did this incredible video. I don't know if you've seen it. If you look it up, uh, Steelheart, Trust and Love. And um, then a friend of mine is doing a movie and he asked me uh, if I'd be in this movie. And when the director, director asked me, hey, do you have any music for the movie? I was like, yeah, sure. So I played him a few songs. He goes, I love this one. I love this one. I love that one. And when I paid him trust and love, it was like, oh, that's it. Got to have this song. Got to have it. So not only be, did they love the song, but then he said, you know, why don't we just call the movie trust and love? So it was, uh, how would I say, um, wow right great mm -hmm. so we did that and then um they asked me to of course act in it and i uh i play this part of a um of a leader of a band that writes this song and writes all the songs and um what's how would i say the band is uh getting older and the producer's getting older and the record company wants to dump everybody and and his wife leaves him. It's a it's a never ending, how would I say, uh, 
drama of things happening all the time. But it is a, uh, the ending of the movie is beautiful and it's, uh, uh, how would I say, everyone comes together. And uh, the song really brings the whole um, final movie to a beautiful climax. And um, I'm acting, I love acting. I'm really excited about uh, doing more. It is a lot of fun. And honestly, I think it's a lot easier than, you know, jumping on a plane throughout the world all the time, you know, yeah. performing all over, the, you know, every night doing an hour and a half of, you know, screaming, yelling and all that. So it's a nice change. So I love it. Yeah, sounds like a good change of pace and easy on the body. <laughs> easy on the body, easy. on. The, I mean, you know, you do a couple of things and you go on a trail and get something to eat and you hang out for the setup. OK, knock yourself out, you know. Exactly. So. Oh, that sounds like a dream. Food anytime you want. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking yeah. of movies, you were the voice of Mark Wahlberg, who we've actually had on the show a couple times. You were the voice of Mark Wahlberg in Rockstar, where you sing We All Die Young, a song you just released a re recording of. What was that experience like? Ah, uh, it was, you know, that's another another gift. You know, and, you know, when I do projects, um, I'm really, I really, you know, I dig in deep and it's like more like the, the, it's the energy, the spirits, the gods, whatever you want to call it. You know, you got to be invited in to the space, you know, and um, that particular movie was, was, a, was an amazing uh, gift because we had Zach Wilde, uh, Jason Bonham, Jeff Pilson and me, that was the band. Okay. And. Uh, quick backstory, we were going to take that band on the road, and the song We All Die Young, um, when the movie was released, that weekend, it was number two in the box office. And that week, they were releasing We All Die Young, the radio, a video, um, a lot of promotion. And just so happens, on Tuesday, you know, I, I get woken up by the horrific um, vision of uh, the towers burning and 9-11 happened. And when 9-11 happened uh, at the time, President Bush said no songs on the radio that have die, kill, blood, or anything negative. So that song was immediately just wiped out. Okay, it wasn't allowed to be on the radio. And it just, you know, bombed. The movie crashed, everything crashed because of that. So here we are, uh, what is it, 20 years later or something like that? And I'm putting on my 20th, uh, 30th anniversary album. And I said, you know, I think we need to re-release this song because it hasn't been really heard and hasn't been really felt. And, and that's why we, uh, I re-released the song now. And it's really picking up a lot of speed. Um, we did a lyric video. So for you who haven't seen it, check it out. It's a lyric video. And now I just finished my uh, performance video. So we're going to put a real video to it as well coming up within the next few weeks as well. So the movie was beyond fun. How's that? Oh, that's awesome. And you are getting so much love in our live feed right now. And I'm going to just take a quick second um, and read some of the comments. And there's a couple questions in there um, for you. So please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I where to begin. Um, everyone loves you. Um, Debbie says you are a great singer, loves listening to your interviews. You are so awesome. Um, freedom from the internal voices we hear from her wild, the internal, I don't know if she's reading lyrics. Um, oh my gosh, sorry. We love you. Um, here's a question. Was the official music video for Angel Eyes filmed on location? I love that area of our country. Yes, uh, it was filmed in um, Lake, uh, oh, my brain just stopped. It was in Nevada, uh, Lake, not Lake Placid. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, it was in location, sorry, I just, my brain just stopped. <laughs> um, uh, you could, uh, yeah, yeah, it's at the tip of my tongue, you know. Um, Anyway, it was on it was on location. It was by the Grand Canyon, and it was uh, the waters were like literally crystal green, and um, 
that was a powerful, beautiful video. Um, but I want to tell you something else is that I re-recorded that song for the 30th anniversary and it's acoustic version of it and it's sung as a duet. I have, um, I'm not going to tell you who the person is singing with me. It's a female, a young female, and she is fantastic. And we captured a beautiful energy. So that video is coming out. That's going to be the, the fourth single from this record. So I hope you guys are ready for that one. This one she is was like, I, <laughs> I'm not right. No, I yeah. want to well, know. I rewrote, it, no, you can't. I'm not, I, I promise you it is <laughs> nothing that you think. Nothing that you think. Okay. And uh, but I, what I will say, I rewrote it not as just a love song. I rewrote it, I loved for one, meaning where it's um, somebody passes, you know, I'll never let you go. Um, somebody getting married, I'll never let you go. You know, uh, when you, uh, you know, a son or a, or a daughter going off into, you know, different country or the war or whatever have you, you know, I'll never let you go. That's how I rewrote it. And that's the way it's sung and the energy of it. And I am really excited for you guys to hear this. I hope you feel the same, you know, um, what's the word? The same energy that I felt redoing this. So, well, it, it's 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 funny you say that. Uh, I got Brian Lamoro on my page right now. He says, "I'll never let you go" is one of his favorite songs. So, uh, I'm sure he's he's looking oh. forward to this this mystery oh. re-release. Yes, <laughs> I promise you, you. What was beautiful? Somebody said the other day I was playing it for a, a group of friends. You know, um, and uh, she said something really really pretty to me. And she's pretty beautiful, whatever you want to call it. Uh, she said. You know, I didn't think that this song could get any better. Now that was a compliment. So that's awesome. I hope you, I really hope you guys like it. And I can't wait now. I'm on, I really now I really want to know. This is gonna be great. And Suze um, yeah. is in our comments, and she said she's actually met you, and she said that you were one of the most humble and genuine people she's ever met. I'm picking up on that as well. Um, this has been a great interview yep. and we can't thank you enough for your time today. Um, and uh, Darianne says your vocals are always so powerful. Thank you. Um, Sean Sawyer is asking, will we ever get a collab with Jeff Scott Soto? Not just him on backing vocals. You know, my heart's always open to whatever, you know, life presents. I don't know. That one, uh, that could be great. Jeff, Jeff and I have a long history. I mean, uh, yeah, he did all the backing vocals on my uh, first album and second album, I believe. And, um, and also we shared, um, you know, the connection in, in Rockstar. He was a singer for the other band and I was the voice of, you know, Steel Dragon. So, um, uh, you know, I can honestly tell you, I don't know, maybe, who knows? <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> and then someone was asking if the on location was Lake Mead. I believe that was it was well. Lake. I believe that it, wait a minute, Lake Mead. Uh, I'm not sure if that's it. Man, I'm going to have to, maybe I'll have to type it in later. I can't believe I can't. Google it. it. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. But then um, again. And then we just have, we, <laughs> we have one more question. Um, Candace. Please loves your voice so much um and she was asking does your throat ever hurt from singing so much um no not from singing you know it's interesting um you know like anything you got when you're singing you got to let it rest you know um with me it's interesting the more i sing the easier it gets and i'm not sure why that is but i'm i'm okay with that um it's mostly the travel okay the lack of sleep um that is where the body and the and the voice always um you know goes wrong but um not really from the singing no so 
No, that's great. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for answering those questions for our viewers. They are so excited that you're here with us today. And we just like, we cannot thank you enough. So this is great. Thank you for having me. And again, call anytime I'm, I'm in. And by the way, you know, I cannot believe that we haven't performed for our troops. I am so all about that. I don't care how it happens, where it is. I don't care if it's in Guam, Alaska, you know. So I'm calling out to you guys. I mean, seriously, uh, I'd love to love to do it. So you let Absolutely. me know. I'm in. Hey, yeah. before, before we get out of here, I, you mentioned that you're about to do a, a 30th anniversary album, which, by the way, if right. If I'm ever doing an anniversary of 30 years of anything, I want a killer, uh, some killer hair like you. Like I want, I want to make sure that my stuff gets right? around for, I mean, look at for as long, long as it can. <laughs> and it's not a wig. But can you? It's not a wig. Yeah. <laughs> so can can you tell us a little bit more about about the 30 year uh, anniversary album? Yes, absolutely. I'd love to. And actually, I can't believe I didn't say anything. Um, so. This album, I re, um, we re-recorded uh, Everybody Loves Eileen. I don't know if you know that song. It's really, we re-recorded a full band, heavy, like really heavy, nasty, rock and roll, just a lot of fun. Um, so uh, live, vibe. Um, I re-recorded um, She's Gone. One, I don't know if you know She's Gone. She's Gone is a very famous song, especially in Asia. Um, in Korea, especially, it was uh, it's still the number one karaoke song since '89, which is unbelievable. Oh, wow. um, but I re-recorded it with just vocals in a 40-piece orchestra, and it is, I mean, it's like, mm. yeah, it's got yeah. energy. Um, also, re-recorded a song called "Mama, Don't You Cry," which I wrote for my mother when she was passing away from cancer, and that is also recorded with a 40-piece orchestra. And uh, I'll never let you go, Angel Eyes, which is um, acoustic, sung as a duet. And then we have um, the other songs, some of the other hits that you know we compiled for ten songs. Trust and Love is in there as well. So um, that is going to be released November thirtieth. The CDs and the LP. Um, right now, we all die young is out, and picking up a lot of speed, which I'm happy about, and. We're gonna put out the video probably within three, four weeks, okay, before we all die young. And uh, then we have the next uh, song after that's called Good To Be Alive. And then the fourth single will be I'll Never Let You Go. So here we come. I hope you guys like it. I mean, this is uh, 30 something years of traveling the world and trains, planes, automobiles, stages, mm -hmm. and you know, whatever else went along with it so thank you by the way I'm definitely looking forward for supporting to supporting me yeah no that's awesome and it has been an honor speaking with you today and where can our viewers go to keep up um with everything with with you and what's going on so i think um a great place to see any visuals go to steelheart youtube okay the steelheart official youtube and there you will see uh, a plethora of uh, videos. Also the trust and love video, which is pretty epic. I mean, it's 10 minutes. And we had um, making that video was like over 700 people involved. So it's a movie, it's not really just a you know video. And uh, a beautiful message as well. Um, uh, you can also go to steelheart.com. Um, also Steelheart uh, Facebook official and um steelheart instagram steelheart01 because someone stole my steelheart oh, so no. steelheart01 on instagram what? yeah what the... i mean and, they, and they're just squatting on it you think it'd give it back it won't give it back <laughs> you know? if i find you i'm gonna get you you're gonna give me my name back <laughs> you know? hey maybe you guys can help me you guys got all <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> um, and also uh, TikTok, Steelheart official TikTok. So I mean, it, I mean, we're kind of like building a re. This Steelheart 30th anniversary is like the rebirth of a whole nother energy, like the Phoenix rising. You know, I don't know if you guys know, I had that terrible accident in '92, which 
I had a lighting truss collapse in my head in Denver Arena, and that took me. Yes, out for I years. read about that. Oh my gosh, how yeah, scary! So I sorry, I just I just read about that yesterday. How terrifying! Yeah, it it was it was it was awful. Uh, I was in bed for seven months. I couldn't get out of bed because I had a, a traumatic brain injury, you know, and um, and it's taken me years, years, and I mean years, to get my clarity back. And yeah. now I'm clearer than I've ever been, but um, it's been a hell of a journey. And like, you know, we all die young is a very big part of that, um, that whole energy. When I wrote that song during that time coming out, I was in a fog of life. So it means a lot to me, you know, the song. And um, uh, this, this anniversary is, how would I say, all of that energy coming to today and kind of releasing it you know, to the world and, and releasing myself basically, you know, and, um, and then, uh, when this is, uh, when we finish promoting this and work on this record, then we're going to go to new heights. So here we go. Awesome. Lucky to be alive. It's a gift. No, and we're glad you're alive as well. And uh, we're going to do a cup, a little housekeeping real quick. So for our chief chat viewers, yeah. this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, October 18th, when Lieutenant General Charles Hamilton, Army Deputy Chief of Staff, G4, joins the chat. Also, mark your calendars for 11 a.m. Central on October 25th to hear from Westworld actor Lewis Hertham. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you the love and admiration you have for the military community, but uh, what you do through your, your voice and your art, uh, man, it, it it's the soundtrack of our lives, right? And so uh, when we, whenever we're having a bad day or, or we trying to get over a situation, we turn to people like you uh, to, to, to kind of get us through situations through, through your songs. So uh, I, I love you, brother. I, I appreciate everything that you're doing uh, for the, for the world at large that, yep. that ultimately benefits us in the military community. Well, thank you, too. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And by the way, I have a show in Dallas on November 10th. Let me know if you want to come. <laughs> November 10th? Okay. Be my guest. Let, me, let, me, November, let me make sure that November 10th. Let me make sure they ain't got me on the road because they, they love to send me <laughs> all over the country. So, But if I'm there, uh, I'll come and check you out. I appreciate that. Whoever wants to come, seriously, whoever wants to come, bring, you know, bring some uh, friends, you know, whoever from, uh, you know, staff, whatever. I got you. Come. Absolutely. All right. So if you don't mind hanging on until after the live is over with, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. Uh, but I just want to say Absolutely. thank you again. And man, it's been a, such an honor having you with us. And we wish you all the best. Uh, and, and Chief Chat out. <laughs>